The Vegas Golden Knights inaugural season has led all the way up to this point. They had a 51 win record in the regular season. They go out and they draft Flurry and they draft they draft all of these young, talented players and some of these older players like James Neal that that find a way to do it and Flurry who found a way to be one of the best seasons in his entire career. And now Vegas has found a way into the playoffs and like we talked about in the last video, they swept 4-0 against the Kings and then 4-2 against the San Jose Sharks and now we're here. Round 3, inaugural season for the Vegas Golden Knights. They've already done the unthinkable. They've made it this far when when everyone thought that they were only going to have like 20-30 wins, but they've made it this far. So, we're going to go ahead and get into this round 3 round four, and a little bit of the aftermath of everything. This is part three of the series of Vegas Golden Knights inaugural season. If you haven't seen the first two, I'd highly recommend go seeing them. It, it's just going to make a whole lot more sense. And I think I did a good job storytelling wise, and this is one of my favorite stories of all time. So go ahead and check those out if you haven't already. I'll probably have them popping up over here in the corner for you in one of these little info tabs. It goes like this. So look out for that. But there's a playlist. Go ahead and check the first two parts out. This is part three. And we're going to go ahead and get right into this. There will be one more part after this. Because the whole plot of this is why Vegas, Vegas' inaugural season and their just career so far is so different and diverse than any other new expansion team in, in any sport for that matter. So we're going to get into this uh, third part here. Look for that fourth part. Go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell so that you see the notification when it comes out. It should be in the next few days here. Go ahead and leave a like, dislike, um, comment down below what you think I could do better, what I could improve on. Um, thank you for tuning in. Let's let's get right into this. So round three, Vegas has won its first two rounds against the King and the Sharks respectively. It's round three and now they're going against the Winnipeg Jets. So if you haven't watched the first two parts, I told you to go watch it, but it's your business. So we're going to go game by game goal by goal from each team and we're going to go over the final score at the end i don't really want to spoil it in advance um, if you already know the scores and the series then good for you but I, I wouldn't tell the story like it's never been told before like like no one knows about it so game one very first game of the series against the winnipeg jets and very early in the first period one minute and five seconds into the period Dustin, sorry, what was his last name? Bif Bifuglian, that was bad. A one-timer off of a drop pass. One, one of five into the first period. Vegas is now down one goal. Not a great way to start a series, right? I mean, you can find a way to win, but um, that's not a great feeling. And then Blake Wheeler, cross-crease pass right to Patrick Line. 6.49 into the first. Vegas is now down two goals in the first game. Ah, gosh, that, that's painful. And, and let me remind you real quick. Vegas has not lost a game one of any series so far. And then Joel Armia scores after an overturned goalie interference. So originally he scored, but they blow it dead. Goalie interference. And they go check it. And they say no goalie interference, and, and it counts. And now it's, we're 7.35 in the first period. We're not even 10 minutes in the first period, and Vegas is down three goals. Ouch. I mean, that's very worrisome. I mean, you're playing a very good team if they've already made it this far in semifinals of the Stanley Cup playoffs. And, and you're down three goals. So what does Vegas do? Braden McNabb on a delayed penalty from the left face-off circle. 8-10 into the first. Less than a minute later, Vegas scores. Braden McNabb. It's now 1-3. You're feeling pretty good, right? You, you scored, yes, you're still down two. But now you got your spice back. And then the second period starts, and it's looking good. The first 10 minutes looks great. But there's a power play against Vegas. And, yeah, it sucks. Penalties suck, right? And it sucks even more when your penalty kill doesn't do the right thing. And, and Mark Schiaffelli. Redirects a shot low in to the net at 9:54 in the second period. Power play goal. It's now 1-4. Ah, shocks Vegas. Come on, go go get this. Prove prove that you can beat the Jets. And Carlson redirects a puck 
bar down off of Marchesol, Jonathan Marchesol shot at 15 55 in the second period and a power play goal. So, yeah, you let a power play goal in, but you put a power play goal in also. So, you're feeling pretty good right now. It's 2 4. You're still down two, but you're only, you still got a whole period and five minutes left in this one. But the end of the second period happens and the third period goes by and no one scores. And Vegas loses. Two to four, the very first time that Vegas has been down in a series at all. First time they've lost game one in a series at all. And it's the first time they didn't have a shutout in game one of a series. Fleury had 22 saves on 26 shots at an 8-4-6 save percentage. And like I said, it was his first non-shutout of game one. If you didn't know, Fleury has played every game so far in the playoffs. Vegas is down 1-0. They're going to game two. Maybe you're worrying a little bit. It's your first time as a new franchise being down in a series. You're going to game two. And, you know, the first 10 minutes aren't very great. And 13 minutes in. 13-23 to be exact. In the first period, Tom, Tomas, not Thomas, Tomas Tatar scores after hitting post first. Hits post, gets it back, shoots it right back in, gets a goal. Vegas is now up 1-0. Yeah, you're feeling pretty good, right? But why stop now? Jonathan Marshall in transition, a backhander right in. 17-22 in the first. Five minutes later, you're now up 2-0. You're looking like you're doing exactly what the Jets did last time. They they were up 3-0, and now, now you're up 2-0. Can, can you do it? Well, no. Kyle Connor squeezes in a short side goal. 7-17 in the third. So they went the whole second period without scoring. Either team. So, you know, that's pretty good. But it's now 2-1, and... Oh, sorry, my nose itches. It's 2-1, and... That's not great. Because now now you're only up one goal on a team that just beat you by two last time. They just scored four goals last time. I mean, what if what if they go crazy right now? But Riley Smith, cross crease to a backhand Marcel goal. Jonathan Marcel's second goal this game. Second backhand goal. 8.45 in the third, so only like a minute and a half later. So Vegas is up 3-1. There's still 11 minutes left, and Vegas finds a way. They close out. No more, no more goals either side. Flurry 30 saves on 31 shots, a 9.68 percentage. It's now tied 1-1 in the series. So you're feeling good, right? Game 3 starts. 35 seconds in. Jonathan Marchessault scores another transition Backhand. Three backhand goals, two in transition, and a matter of four periods. And, and realistically, it was a matter of like it, like 35 seconds into the game. So like, come on. Pretty much three periods, right, if we're talking. So like, that's great. Marcel, three in two games, all backhands, two in transition. Vegas feeling good and they're up 1-0 in game three. And then Mark Schifelli scores a double deflection off his stick and then off of his knee. And it just bounces like this conveniently right behind Fleury. And now it's 1-1, 528 into the second period. Ah, shucks, right? But let me tell you something. 12 seconds later, Hellebike turns over the puck for an easy James Neal goal. He loses track of it. James Neal locates it and puts it right in the back of the net. 12 seconds after Schiffelli just scored. And now, at 5.40 into the second. It's 2-1 Vegas. You're only up one. But, you know, not too worried because only a couple minutes later, James Neal, again, loops behind the net. You know, just like this. And finds Tuck right here. Passes to Tuck. Tuck puts it in for a quick one-timer. 8-13 into the second period. It's now 3-1. Vegas is feeling good. You're up 3-1 this game. Series is tied after you lost game one in not very good fashion. And 18 seconds into the third, Mark Schifelli scores the second of the game off of a looping Kyle Connor pass. It's now 3-2. But when you're up one goal, the other team at the end of the game He's going to pull their goalie and have that extra man to try and get that in. And Vegas found a way to, you know, use it against him. And and Marshall, empty netter. 
So Jonathan Marshall has four goals now in, in two games. That's great. Vegas wins 4-2. Vegas is up 2-1 in the series. And Flurry, he continues to do great. So we're entering game four now. Vegas is up 2-1 in the series. I'm, you, you can't let him tie it up here, right? So game four. Jonathan Marshall, two minutes in. Jonathan Marshall, cross crease to Carlson on the power play. 225 into the first period is 1 0. Wow. Vegas is looking good, right? 1 0. Patrick Line, one timer, short side, 929 into the second. Another power play. So power plays eaten up both teams all series long. Now it's 1 1. Oh, shucks. You can't lose this game, right? You can't lose this game. And Bellomare gets his own rebound and a wraparound attempt to Nozick. Now Vegas is up. I was 10-12 in the second. Vegas is up 2-1. Okay? Okay, you, you got the momentum back. Let's do something with it. And then Tyler Myers scores a very confusing one-timer. I, I, I wrote this quite a while back, so I don't remember exactly which one this this confusing one-timer was referencing. Um, I can grab it right here real quick, and, and I'll do it real quick if I can try and locate it. We're looking at... Game four. Ah, uh, boom, boom, boom. Hold on. Give me, give me like two seconds, and if I can't find it, game four. Right. Okay. We're looking at Tyler Meyer when we're Tyler Meyer scores. Did I didn't write any information? That is great job by me. Wow, good job, right? And by the way, I know, I probably, I talked about this last time. Just the playoffs alone is seven pages full, seven pages full of notes for you guys. So I'm very dedicated to this. I don't have a lot of fans at the moment, but I'm very dedicated to this, so don't doubt me for one second. I'm putting all my effort into this. Sadly, I didn't write it what this one-timer was and why it was confusing, but it was 534 in the third period. It's now 2-2. Vegas needs to win. They can't let this series tie. And Riley Smith in transition, 1302 into the third period, does that 3-2, and that's how it ends. And Fleury has 35 saves on 37 shots with a 9.46 save percentage. He's still looking good this series. Vegas is up 3 3 to 1 in the series. 3 to 1 in the series. You're feeling good. But now you got to close the series. Got to do it. Okay, so game five. Game five. Need to win this. And, and you will make the Stanley Cup playoffs if you do this. And right off the bat. Five minutes into the first, 5-11 to be exact. Jets turn it over. Tuck makes quick work of it. Quick work of it. He locates the puck. He puts it right in after they turn it over. 5-11 in the first. It's 1-0. And a game that you got to win to make the Stanley Cup playoffs to, to make even more records than you've already made. And Jets aren't going down without a fight. Josh Morosi. Scores a one-timer off of a face-off. 17-14 in the first. Now, now you're tied 1-1 in the first period in the game that you got to win. You can lose it. Yeah, but do you want to? No. And they didn't. They didn't lose it. Because Ryan Reeves redirects a puck. Bar down, 13-21 in the second. And that's how the game ends. And Flurry has 31 on 32 with a 9-6-9 save percentage. And Vegas has done it. They have made the Stanley Cup playoffs. They were expected to win 30 games. They had like a 200 to 1 odds to make the playoffs. Some people said it was more likely for a pro poker player to um, score a, something on a on a river. There's some nonsense that I read, and everyone was saying this team built to be good in five, ten years, but they've made the Stanley Cup playoffs in year one. Let that sink in. An expansion team. You're one making it. Whatever whatever team you're a fan of. Okay, let's... Whatever team. I don't care. Um, the Maple Leafs. The Panthers. The Penguins. Any, anything. Coyotes. Whatever team you're a fan of. And if your team makes the Stanley Cup playoffs, I'm betting you're hype. You're rubbing it in the faces of all your friends. Who, who their team didn't make it. You're walking around in a jersey to work if you can. And, and you're proud to be a fan of that team. But Vegas, year one did that. Imagine. Just imagine that. 
your team, whatever that favorite team is, the very first year you watch your favorite team, they go make playoffs. And then they make the Stanley Cup Finals. Wow. What a story. Now the question for that you're asking right now, if you don't know, and we're going to switch to my phone because I ran out of space on my big old whiteboard here. The question you're probably asking, if you didn't already know, is what does Vegas do now? They've already pulled off one of the greatest stories in all sports, Cinderella story, whatever you want to call it. They went from expansion draft to the Stanley Cup finals, the, the championship round in their very first year. And you're asking, what do they do? And, and if you don't know already, then stick through. Because I'm going to tell you, you know, and make it very interesting. So I'm going to pull my notes up on my phone now. Um, okay, one quick thing I missed. USA Today predicted 28 wins. And Vegas had 51 wins, if you didn't know. And then won thir- How many so far? 12 so far in the playoffs. So almost half... Of the wins they were expected in their entire season, they have in the playoffs so far. So Vegas is doing pretty good. So so let's get into it. If you, if you didn't know, they play the Washington Capitals. A, a decent team, I think. They were like sixth in the league for odds at the beginning of the season. So both kind of underdogs, if we're being honest. So it's Vegas against the Capitals. It's, it's a good matchup, right? It, it's William Carlson versus... Alex Overton, I mean, one of the greatest goal scorers of all time if you don't put him first. And what happens? Vegas just lost game one. And they came back and swept the rest of the series. And they did it in good fashion. So what are they going to do now? Game one. Game one. Against the Washington Capitals. Colin Miller, slap shot. Are you okay, Geralt? Okay. Colin Miller slap shot between, um, between the face off and the blue line. I think I was trying to say the right face off. Um, Seven fifteen into the first, a power play. It's one zero. Vegas is up one zero in the Stanley Cup Finals. And what can they do? How are they going to finish this game? Are are they going to keep rolling that momentum? And sadly, Brett Connolly deflects Kempe's shot between legs. Fourteen forty one in the first, and it's one one. Okay, so now it's like, now you're it, tied up. And it, it's still the first period, so you're not too worried. And Nicholas Backstrom scores off of a wraparound pass from Oshie. 15-23 in the first, and 1-2. Now you're down in the first period, in the finals. And are you a little bit drained? You're so excited to be there, but but maybe you've realized, oh, we, we can't do this. I mean, we got lucky, maybe. Maybe, maybe that's what you're thinking, right? No, Carlson... Behind the goal line, rebound. Pretty much like this. If the goal's like here, he like wraps it around like that. But but he doesn't go around. But he, pretty good. Rebound. 2-2, two, 18-10 two, in the first. Now we're entering the second period. Tie game. First game of the Stanley Cup Finals. That's pretty good. Smith. Riley Smith. Scores after three missed Vegas attempts. 3-21 in the second period. Three missed attempts, and they find a way to get it in the goal. And now they're up. One goal in the first game. But, soon after, John Carlson, 829, scores off a pretty pass from Oshi. It's 3-3. These are battling. This is going to be a great series. Back and forth, back and forth. Is that what you want to see? Well, if you're not a fan of either team, then yes, that's what you want to see. You want to see a great game every single game. As a Vegas fan myself, I... I would rather see a blow at every single game, but you know, that's how it goes. And it's 3 3. And then, sadly, it's 3 4 because Fleury loses track of the puck. It's underneath his left pad. He loses track of it and he backs up, and the puck rolls on in, slides on in either way you put it. And it's 3 4. And that happens at 1 10 into the third period. And now it's 3 4. Oh, shucks. But. Ryan Reeves scores after a big scramble for a rolling puck. At 2.42 into the third period, it's 4-4. Okay, so it's tied, and it's still going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, right? And then Tomas Nozick scores a backdoor after cross-crease Shea pass. 9.44 in the third, it's 5-4. Again, it's still back and forth now, and Vegas is up one goal in the third period. 
And they continue to be up one goal in the third period until like two minutes left of the game when, when Washington has to pull their goalie to add that extra man to go put pressure. And with three seconds left in the game, Thomas Nozick scores an empty netter after a very, very good save from McNabb. The, goal, the puck goes past Fleury and McNabb blocks it himself. Thomas Nozick has back-to-back goals in the third period and gets the win. Vegas has done it. They won game one in the Stanley Cup playoffs. And and they won by 6-4 in a very close game. And they've they've proven time and time again that they can win these tough games. Fleury has 24 saves and 28 shots. 8-5-7. Not the greatest percentage. I think that's the third time in the entire Stanley Cup playoffs they had below a 9. Okay, so game two. Vegas up 1-0. Why not make it 2-0? Am I right? Am I right? Say it with me. Make it 2-0, right? James Neal. Scores in transition after a high rising pass. At 758 in the first, this thing was flying through the air like this, and he, he slaps it down with his hand eye coordination. He he tracks his way on to the goal like this, and he puts it in 1 0. Feeling good. You're up 1 0 in the series, you're up 1 0 in the game. Oh boy, you're rolling. You made it this far already. Well, why stop now? And then. Lars Ulett scores a one-timer and wide open net. 17-27 first, period. 1-1. Fleury gets a little far out of his crease, out of the blue ice, and, and it ends up in Lars' hands and puts it in. Pretty, pretty easy. I mean, Fleury still made a decent attempt on it, but I mean, when you're so far out making another save and then someone else finds it, I mean, you're going to get unlucky at times. And that's what happened here. It's 1-1 in the first period. And then in the second period, five minutes and 30 second, 38 seconds in, Alex Overton, one-timer from Lars. It's 1-2. That's the first time we've heard Alex's name in this series, which is a good thing if you ask me. And I hope I hope we don't hear his name again. But, like, we all know how good he is, so, like, don't expect that. It's 1-2, and then Brooks Orpik scores off a of double-bounce ground post. So he shoots it. Bounced off the ground, and then it bounced off the post, and then it goes in the net. I mean, that sounds like a good game of dice to me. Like, pretty good. And it won three in the second period. And then Shea Theodore in the second period scores a blue line wrister from the blue line. You should know where that is. It's somewhere around the middle of the ice. It's a little bit over. I mean, if, if you're watching this, you know you know what a hockey ice rink is, right? From the blue line, a wrister. Not even a slap shot. doesn't bring it back. Just a wrister in from the blue line. That's impressive, Shea Theodore. It's 3-2. Capitals. 3-2 Capitals. And that's what it ends as. Vegas loses. Series is 1-1. Flurry, 23 of 26 saves. 8-8-5 save percentage. Shocks, it's 1-1. That's not very good. Is it? That's not very good. I don't like that. But let's go into game three and let's go win it, right? Alex Overton. In the second period, no goals in the first period. Alex Overton, one minute and ten seconds into the second period, scores after a four-save frenzy by Flurry. Some great saves there. I, I'd recommend you go watch some great saves, but Alex finds a way to put it in, and he puts it in as 0-1. Vegas. And it's a tie series, and you're down one in the game. That kind of sucks, right? And then well, you're down two because Avenji, because Knutson scores a wrister on a 3 1 transition. 3 1 transition. I mean, sure, Flurry's save percentage is not great. But when it's 3 1, and if you don't know how that works, that means three of the Capitals are rushing and there's one defender and then Flurry in the goal. So. It's kind of 3-2, but like you don't count the goalie because he's obviously going to be there. So it's 3-1 transition. That's tough because Fleury has to cover two people. Okay, so you get, I mean, Fleury's great. I mean, he can do that consistently, but you're going to get a pass him once in a while. So now you're down two, and Thomas Nozick scores after uh, Braden Holby gives it up. Their goalie, by the way, if you didn't know. He goes behind the ice, and he tries to kick it out, and he ends up losing track of it. And it gets stolen from him, and it gets centered, and then Thomas Nozick, as I said, puts it in the net. And <laughs> let's just say their goalie was not very happy, even if it was his fault. He wasn't very happy, so that's 1-2 in Vegas. There you go. 
You score off of their mistakes. Yeah, you're still down one, but it's down one, not down two, right? Well, now you're back down two because Devontae smith Pelly slides smoothly for a slow wrister, just kind of gliding by and then just boom, right in. Or this way, I'm not really sure which hand he is, but nonetheless, Vegas is down two and they don't find a way to score. With seven minutes left in the game, they don't find a way to score. They lose at 1-3. They're down 1-2 in the series. Again, this is the only second time they've been down in a series in all of the playoffs. But it's the Stanley Cup Finals, and it's not looking great. And Fleury has 23 saves at 26 and 8-8-5. Fleury has no games, if I'm right. No games above 9% in this series so far. That's not good. But game four, you find a way to get it back, right? You're going to make it 2-2, and then you're going to push it to game five, and you're going to... And, oh, TJ Oshie scores off rebound on his foot. 9.54 in the first on a power play. Now you're down 0-1. Ouch. But but you got to win this game and tie it, right? You're going to do that, right? Well, Tom Wilson doesn't think so, and he scores a one-timer. Out front from a very nifty pass. 16-26 in the first. Now you're down 0-2. Down 0-2. That's not a good feeling. I mean, you just did a last game and you lost. Do you really want to do that again, Vegas? I don't think so. But might not make it worse. So it's 0-3 now because Devontae smith Pelly scores after bouncing off skate. Two back-to-back off skate goals. 1939, the first. You're down 3 0 after just the first period. Now you're 15 minutes and 23 seconds in the second period. You're down four because John Carlson scores off a fast slap shot one timer. Mm, you're down four, Vegas. But it's fine because James Neal sneaks in one from the side of the net at 5.43 in the third period. And you still got 14 minutes and some change. You're down three goals. And you know what? Then Riley Smith scores. A patient backhand. 12-26 in the third. And now you got about seven minutes and you're down two goals. And now you're down three because Micah Kempe, one-timer in transition. 13-39 in the third. Now you got about six minutes and you're down three again. And then Brett Canali puts Shea Theodore in the spinner before a wrister at 18-51 in the third. And it's two to six. And... Oh my god, did Shea Theodore look lost during that? Right in front, if you didn't know, right in front on the left side of this goal, he, he kind of like does this, and, and, and it almost looks like he loses track of the puck, but he doesn't, and Shea Theodore just folds. I'm going to be honest with you. It's not nice to skate. It's kind of, it's very hard. Very hard to skate. And it's very hard to play defensive basketball. At high level. Now put those two things together and that's even harder. So him getting spun around, you know, I can't really blame him. But Vegas losing by four points in a game that you got to win to tie it up. I mean, you can kind of blame him at that point. But they made it this far against everyone else opposing them, right? Everyone's saying, no, you can't do this. You're going to fail. You're not even going to be close to the playoffs, but they've done it. And yeah, they're down 3 1 in the series. And they just lost by four goals. And Fleury had 17 saves and 23 with a 7-3-9. First time below eight in the entire playoffs. But Vegas has gone through adversity. And they're going to they're gonna do it again, right? 3-1 in a series in the finals? Let's find out. Jacob Vrana. Transition goal 6-24 in the second period. The whole first period had no goals. And Vegas has to win this if you didn't know. Because it's the best of seven series. The first of four wins. And Vegas is down one. In a must-win game. And then Nate Schmidt shoots off of Niskanen skate. Five hole. 940 in the second period. It's 1-1. One, one. There you go, Vegas. Must win, right? Adversity. You're going to get it. And then Alex Overton, one-timer. 10-14, second period. Power play. 1-2. Oh, gosh, you're down one again. Son of a biscuit, right? But adversity. Adversity. Shows of the Washington Capitals. Shoves David Perron into the goalie for a goal that at first was goalie interference, but then overturned 
because he shoved him into the thing, so he had no control over his body. So even though he did bump into the goalie, because he was on his heels from the push, there's not much he could do. So now it's 2-2, 1931 in the second period. Sorry, 12:56 in the second period. It's 2-2. And guess what? Adversity. Alex Tuck cross crease pass for Smith, Riley Smith. One timer, 1931 in the second period. Power play goal, 30 seconds left in the second period. You're up 3-2 in a must-win game. It looks like they're going to do it in the third period. Just started, right? And this team's rolling. You're up. You're up one. After back-to-back goals, and a very weird one at that. Okay, three-two, and then Devontae Smith Pelly scores as he's falling, and now it's three-three at nine fifty-two in the third period. But it's tied in Vegas. You just need one goal to push it to another game, and then you do it again, and and again, and. and the, and then Sabiza turns over puck, and Lars Elliott sneaks the puck past Flurry at twelve twenty three in the third. And now Vegas is down three four in a must win game with seven minutes left, and they can't do it. They lose. Flurry twenty nine saves and thirty three. Vegas loses in the Stanley Cup Finals. And oh boy, was it tough to watch for me as a Vegas fan. And oh boy, did that Cinderella story end so abruptly and so sadly. But they did it. So now, now that we know what happened, Vegas, an expansion team, first year team, a team that was thought to have 30 wins max, a team that was going to build five years down the road, a team that had no chance to make the playoffs, made playoffs with 51 wins. Swept the first round. First expansion team to sweep the first round. Beat the Sharks 4-2. And then 4-1 against the Jets. And they're in the finals. The first modern era team to do that. They were the first modern era team to have a winning record. Let alone playoffs. Let alone semifinals. Let alone Stanley Cup finals. But they lost in the Stanley Cup finals. And, and Alex Overton was a big reason for that. And shucks. Am I right? Gosh, that's going to be forgotten in the history books because they lost. And who cares about second place? But it's not going to be forgotten. At least not for me. That was important to me. And and I think it should be for a lot of people. This is a great story. One of my favorite, if not my favorite, in sports. And now I want to talk about some stats real quick. And the future of Vegas, what they've done since, and what, what they look to do now. So the flair of the flair. Flurry playoff stats. His goals against average was a 224. That's very good. That's extremely good. His save percentage was a 927, which puts him at first or second in the league this year if he were to have that. And he had four shutouts in the playoffs, and he had four during the entire regular season. And he faced 641 shots, saved 593. That's pretty good, right? Okay, and now let's let's just let's talk about what Vegas has done so far since then, since year one. We we know what they did year one. We just talked about that, right? What have they done since? Well, so far to this point, this season has not ended yet. Vegas is thinking of the wild card. Vegas has not missed the playoffs a single time so far. Four through four years, they have not missed playoffs once. And actually, last was it last year. Yeah, last year they were second in the entire league. In the entire league. And they made the Western Conference Finals. And even better yet, they've made the Western Conference Final two more times since their first year. So so three times they've made the Western Conference Final. One time they made the Finals, and one time they lost round one. Which is not very great. But they did it. They, they've Done something that no other team has done. And and let's just talk stats real quick. Jonathan Marchessault, I'm sure you know that name. It, I mean, even as a Vegas fan, I never realized how truly important he was until I was looking at stats. Jonathan Marchessault leads the team in goals, points, and assists. All of them. And, and, and shot attempts, and games played, and... 
you know, a lot of stats, but goals, assists, and points. He leads the whole organization, the franchise record, which is great. And Flurry, I mean, as you could predict, leads the team in, in wins, save percentage, and shutouts. Now we're done with the notes. Now, now, now I'm going to ramble. I know, I know we're really far in. I think we're at least 30 minutes in. 35 minutes in. That's what I'll say. I'll say 35 minutes in. Vegas. Yes, is my team. Yes, I'm biased. I won't, I won't lie about that. But name another story that is as crazy as that. Michael Jordan. Yeah, didn't make his, make his team. Jimmy Butler. Homeless to low-tier college to NBA to first-round draft to all-star to in the finals and play this hard out. Great story, right? But what beats a first-year team? Sorry, I got itch. What beats a first-year team making it all the way to the finals? I mean, just think about that. Think about it. So, say Seattle Supersonics in the NBA start next year. They're brought back, and then they draft the the extras from the other teams, the people that the other teams didn't want, and they make the NBA Finals, and they lose to the Bucks. But they made the Finals in year one. Now, now let's look. Maybe, maybe the um, the Oilers in the NFL come back, and and they. Do the same thing, and they lose in the Super Bowl. Those are great stories, but but that's fantasy. This happened. Vegas, Vegas did it, and that's special. And to prove how special it is, my next video in this series, which you should check out the second draft, is go ahead and turn that bell on so you can see it. That's what we're going to be talking about. Is we're going to be talking about why it was so special and why other teams haven't been able to do the same thing. I'm not going to say replicate it. I mean, Seattle's the only new expansion team and they're not looking so hot. I think they have like 24 wins on something and Vegas just swept them the whole series this this last night. So, why haven't other teams been able to do the same thing? And that's what we're going to be talking about in the next video. So tune in for that. And if you stuck around this through, I'm sure you liked the video. Otherwise, I don't know what you're doing. So go ahead and leave a like. Or dislike if you really hate it that much. If I was just background noise to annoy your sister or something, then dislike it. I don't care. Go ahead and leave a comment down below if just anything. If what you think the greatest story is. You do that. Comment down below what you think the greatest sports story is. If you agree with me and it's Vegas. If, if you think it's Jordan. If you think it's... If, if, I don't know, who else? Jimmy Butler or Tiger Woods or or anything. I don't care. Do, do Russell Wilson, super late round draft and do, yeah. You, whatever your favorite story is in sports history. I want you to go ahead and go ahead and comment that down below. Sorry about that noise real quick. Go ahead and comment that down below. Leave a like. If you got a dislike it, dislike it. Go ahead and subscribe. Turn on the bell so you can watch the next video and... I'll see you guys next time, and and as I always say, I hope I taught you something. I hope it made you smile, maybe laugh, or something, and you guys be safe out there.